Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome back to our swimming strength and conditioning and prehab session. Um, my name is Chiara, and I'm a biokineticist at the Sports Science Institute here in Cape Town. Um, thanks so much for joining. Um, before we get started, the equipment you need for this session is uh, um, dumbbells or just weighted objects, so you can use water bottles that are filled up or uh, tins of food, and then an uh, elastic band or TheraBand. Um, if you don't have one, you can also use a large towel. Um, and then the last object for today, um, just something that you can find around, is an elevated surface or just a chair or your couch um, or a table, anything like that. We're going to be using that later on. Okay, um, before we get started, please make sure that you aren't working through pain in any of the exercises. So if you have any niggles or injuries, please do um, keep that in mind while you are doing the exercises. Um, and then let's get started. Okay, we're just going to start off with an easy warm-up, so you're just walking on the spot. So jog. Okay, you can do some butt kicks. Jog again. Okay, then I'm going to do 10 jumping jacks. Back to your easy jog. onto something if you need to. We're just going to do 10 forwards and backwards swings with the legs. Okay, other side. You can still hold on to something if you need to, I'm just going to face you. So I don't move my back to you. We're going to do 10 swings across the body, the legs. Okay, other side. Okay, then to open the chest, we're doing 10 chest openers, just swing the arms open and close, try to keep them nice and loose. Okay, and then you're going to take the arms up and down as well, 10 per side. Next one, you're going to pop your hands on your shoulders and you're going to do 10 circles with the elbows moving forward. Okay, and then 10 circles backwards. Good. Okay, if you have a mat or soft surface that you're working on, you're just going to move to the one side of it. Feet are comfortable distance apart, and I'm going to do some roll down. So starting off with your head, you're going to nod the chin, round the shoulders, and then slowly 
and stack your vertebra moving down to the floor. Okay, you're going to hang there for a bit, so you should feel a stretching in the calves and hamstrings. And then from there, hands on the floor, you're going to walk your hands forward into a plank position. Hold it for a second, walk your hands back up. And then slowly roll back up, starting off at the pelvis. Tucking your pelvis under and slowly rolling back up. Okay, you're going to do three more of those. And on that last one, you're just going to do half of it. So you're going to roll down and then stay in your plank position. Last one. Remember you're only doing half of it, so rolling down, walking your hands out, and then staying there. Okay, then when you're in that plank position, you're going to push your hips back into a pike and then touch your right hand to your left foot, alternating sides as you do your toe touches, and you're going to do five on each side. back into your pike again. Try to pull your heels down to the floor so you can feel the stretch in your calves and hamstrings again. And then you're going to walk the right foot in, left foot in, so you end up in a deep frog sit. And then walk your feet back up, try to keep your hips nice and low. And you're going to repeat that five times as well. You want to try to get those feet as close to the hands as possible. Last one. Good. Okay, then we're going to pop your hands and knees on the floor. We're going to go into our four point kneeling position, so hands directly under the shoulders, knees directly under the hips. And we're going to be doing our bird dog, so opposite arm and leg lifts up, so hip height and, hip height and shoulder height. Make sure that your back stays nice and straight and does not half extend. Okay, you're going to do five per side of these. Slowly and controlled. Good. Okay, then you're going to put your feet together, knees apart. You're going to sit back into your child's pose, pushing your hips onto your, your feet. And then sitting forward into a cobra. And you're going to alternate between those two positions, doing five of each. Jump up, grab a sip of water if you need it, and then we are going to be grabbing our bands. Hang the dumbbells there for later. Okay, so for the first exercise, you're going to need your band. This is going to be the start of our activation set. You're going to be lying on your back with feet hip distance apart, knees are bent. Okay, and you want to make sure that the knees stay aligned with the toes throughout the exercise and you're holding the band above your head or um, at about in line with your chest so that the hands are above and the shoulders and arms are straight. 
Okay, you want to have a little bit of tension in the band already before you've even started. Then from there, you're going to lift the hips up into a pelvic bridge, so slowly rolling from the pelvis all the way through the spine, lifting up. Then in that top position, you're going to do a band pull apart, pulling the band or your hands down to the floor, and then slowly roll back down. Okay, you're going to do 10 of those. Dive in through the glutes and hamstrings to lift the hips off the floor. And then you want to open and close the band with control. Then you can sit up. You can come into a kneeling position just so that the knees aren't in the way of the hands. Um, and you're going to do some shoulder external rotation, so still using your band. Um, you're going to be using a single strand of the band if you have a continuous loop, otherwise, just your normal band for if you have a fair band. What you're going to be doing is keeping the elbows nice and close and tucked into your body, and your palms are going to be facing down. Okay? For this one, you want to try to pull the shoulders down and back, so don't let the shoulders hunch forward, you want to pull them down. And then you're going to be pulling the band apart, just pulling with the hand and not letting the elbows fly up. Okay, we're doing 10 of these as well. You should feel it working at the back of the shoulders. Band down for the last one, lying on your tummy. You can have arms stretched out in front of you, legs are stretched out behind you. Palms are going to be facing in, so thumbs are pointing up for this one, and you're going to have your head hovering just above the floor. Okay, and then for this, you're going to lift your right arm and left leg up as high as you can, hold for two seconds, and then slowly control back down. And then move over to the other side. Okay, and you're going to do five per side of these. And keep those toes pointed. Good. Okay. You can roll over. We're doing the whole set again. So starting off with the bridges with the band pull apart. Remember, feet are hip distance apart and arms are straight for the pull apart. Okay, 10 of these. Remember you're trying to get those hips as high as possible so that there's a straight line from the knees through the hips to the shoulders. Then into kneeling position, you can stand as well if you want to. 
for external rotations of the shoulder. Remember keeping the elbows tucked in. So if you do feel like they want to slowly start lifting up, you can pop a towel or a pillow between your side and your shoulders and use that as a kind of guide to where you should be keeping the elbows. Sorry, I said shoulders, but I meant elbows. 10 of these. Remember you're trying to do it slowly and controlled. Palms facing down. Good. Okay, and then onto your tummy for the opposite arm and leg lift. Five of each. Good. Okay, so activation set done, you can grab some water quickly and then I'm going to explain the first main set that you're going to start. Okay, for this first main set all you need is your elastic band again. Okay, so for the first exercise, what we're going to be doing for this one, it's called a dynamic hamstring reach. So, um, as you can tell by the name, we're going to be working mostly on the hamstrings, the glutes will be involved as well. Um, and the hamstrings are really important muscle for kicking in the pool. Um, so what's going to happen for this one is you're going to be weight bearing on your one leg. Okay, so I'm going to be on my left foot for now and then you've got a slight bend in that knee. And then what's going to happen is you're going to take the right leg backwards, right on, then your arms forward as you hinge at the hips, taking your torso down to the floor. Okay, you want to try and keep your back straight the whole time. So as I slowly lean forward, Kicking my hips back, down as far as you can into that position. You can see I've got a slight bend in the knee, tension in the hamstring, and my back is straight. And then driving through the glutes and hamstrings to stand up again. Okay, so we're going to be doing six per side of these. Doesn't matter which side you start on. You want to try to do it slowly and controlled again. Your balance is going to be tested here as well. Another important point here is that when you are down in that bottom position, you want to try to keep both hips pointing down to the floor and not letting that other hip open up to the side. Okay, other side. Last one. Good. Okay, then you can grab your exercise band. For the second exercise, we're going to pop the band around our feet, holding either end. Okay, you want to sit with the legs straight and torso upright, so keep that back nice and straight. If you do feel like it's difficult to sit in this position because of the tight hamstring, you can bend the knee slightly, otherwise your legs are straight. Okay, then from here, Palms are going to be pointing down, and you're going to be pulling the band towards your chest, elbows coming up to shoulder height. Okay, so you want to try to keep those elbows nice and high, and don't keep them tucked in as you pull backwards. Okay, we are doing 10 of these. Okay, then for the last exercise, this is going to be a stabilizing exercise working mostly through the core. You're going to be in a high plank position with the hands under the shoulders and the legs extended. And then what you're going to do from there is lift your right arm up, left arm up, right leg, left leg. 
Okay, so this is a dynamic plank. You're going to be doing six in total of lifting each limb up. And what you want to make sure throughout the exercise, whichever arm or leg you're lifting up, is that the hips stay stable and are not rocking around. Okay, off you go. doing three rounds in total so you can quickly grab some water and then move on when you're ready. Okay, so remember it's six dynamic hamstring reaches per side. and slow. I'm going to try to keep that control through the glutes and hamstrings. The further down you go, the more you'll feel it stretching from the hamstrings up into the glutes. with your band for our high rows. Remember palms are facing down and elbows are up at shoulder height. of these. Good. Okay, and then into our dynamic high plank. So just a reminder as well, if you have any wrist issues or niggles in the wrist, you're welcome to go and rest on your fists um, instead of on your flat hands for this high plank position. Round number two, grab some water and then we're going to start the last round. Okay, last set of the dynamic hamstring reach. Remember, your back is staying nice and straight as you lean forward and you're keeping both hips pointing down to the floor. side. Okay, 
Okay, six to the side of those. Then you're sitting down, grabbing your band for high rows. Remember, legs are straight and back is nice and straight. Good. Okay, and then into your final round of the high planks. And the that dynamic one so that you're lifting one limb up at a time. Okay, well done. Okay, grab some water, then we're going to move on to our second main set. Okay, for this next one, you will need your dumbbells or your weighted object, and then your elevated object as well, so your chair or bed, couch, table, whatever it is. With your elevated surface, we're going to be doing something called a split squat. So one leg is going to be placed out in front of your surface, okay, so your chair, whatever it is. And then the other foot is going to be back, lifted up onto the surface, and you're going to be putting your toes down into the bench like that. So don't lie your foot down on the bench, pointing down. You want toes pressing through the bench. Make sure that the front leg has a big enough step forward, so that when you take your hips down to sit into your split squat, the hips go straight down and you don't end up leaning forward because you're too squished behind you. Okay, so you want to have to take the hips down so that the knee stays pretty much over the ankle. Okay, both hips are going to be pointing forward so don't let yourself open up and then going straight down and driving up through the glute to stand up again, doing six per side. Okay, that's the first exercise, so let's keep going with that one. Try and get as low as you can. Good. Okay, other side. Keep those knees in line with the toe as well. Good. Okay, then you can grab your weighted object. What we're going to be doing for this one, I call this exercise scapular raises because um, you're going to be working with your arms and your scapular plane. So instead of having your arms directly out in front of you or out to the side, you're going to take them up at a 45 degree angle. Okay, hand dumbbells holding um, in your hands, and then you're going to have a slight bend in the elbows, thumbs pointing up as you lift your weighted objects up to shoulder height at that 45 degree angle. Okay, so remember it's not a swing. Doing a lift, you're going to do 10 of these. And last one. Good. Okay, then you can keep one of your dumbbells with you. Okay, and we're going to go into a high plank position, pop the dumbbell out to your one side, and then doing six per side, you're going to lift the dumbbell up and move it back across the other side with you. Okay, so you want to be pulling across the body, so from put the dumbbell on your right hand side and you'll lift it up and move it to the left with your left hand. Okay, six per side. 
Try to keep your hips nice and stable. We're doing three rounds again, so grab some water if you need to. And then we're going to start the second set. Remember that front foot needs to take a big enough step backwards for you to have space to go down into your split squat. Six per leg, change over. Then grab your dumbbells for our scapular raises. Remember, you want to keep slight bending the elbows while you're doing it, so don't let your arms be completely locked out. Okay, ten of these. one dumbbell for your plank while you move the dumbbell back and forth. Yeah, six per side. We've got one last set of that. Let's grab some water quickly. And then start the last set when you're ready. Six per side. Remember this one, you're pushing the hips straight down, so don't let them move forward. Good. Okay, then grabbing your dumbbell for the last set of the scapula raises. Remember, thumbs are pointing up, moving at a 45 degree angle. And last one. And then keep your one dumbbell for your plank. Okay, last set, six 
facade. Done. Okay, you can put your equipment out to the side. We're not going to be using it again. Okay, so we've got one final set that we're going to do. It's going to be a bit of a conditioning set, so heart rate is going to go up a bit quicker than it would have in the previous set. Okay, so what we're going to be doing, the first exercise we're going to do, we're doing three rounds of this as well. We're going to be doing four jump lunges per leg and then eight hacks or planks on the floor. So I'll show you, the, show you the jump lunges to start off with. You're starting in a lunge position. You go down into your lunge and then jump up to change sides. Okay, driving the arms opposite to the legs, using those to help you power up. So four per leg, then you're going down onto the floor into a low plank position and you're moving forwards and backwards taking your chin basically from between your elbows to between your hands. And you're going to do eight of those forwards and backwards. Okay, three rounds. You're going to try to do it as quickly as possible, but don't rush through the exercises um, where you end up compromising form. Okay, so still control the movement through the exercises. Okay, four lunges per side, and then eight hacks or planks. Three rounds. Off you go. Try to keep your hips nice and low for the hacksaw plank. Okay, straight up for your second round. And last round. Yeah, last eight of the Huxle plane. and relax. Good. Okay, that was our session for today. We're just going to finish off with a stretch. So what you're going to do, go straight into your half kneeling lunge position. And then from there, before you put your hips back, I want you to slightly activate that glute at the back. And then while that's activated, just push the hips forward a little bit. You should feel the stretching in the front of your hips. Can lift your arms up if you want to add a bit of extra stretch. Okay, change over to the other side. Remember, activate the glutes first. So it's just that little squeeze and then pushing the hips forward. Good. Okay, then you roll over onto your back. 
You're going to bring one knee into your chest. Let the other leg just relax. Arts on the floor. Okay, then you're going to take that knee across your body, pulling it with your one hand. Just try to keep both shoulders on the floor and you'll get that rotation through the spine. Remember to keep breathing nice and deeply, you don't hold your breath. Okay, then switch legs, so you're going to bring the other leg into the chest first. Yeah, and then take it across your body. Okay, yeah, then you're gonna Straighten, or actually you can bend the one leg, you can straighten the other one, try and curl the toes down towards your shin and you're going to pull the leg into your chest. Okay, switch sides. Okay, then pop the left ankle onto the right knee and you're going to bring your knees into your chest holding behind the right thigh for your figure four stretch. You should feel it stretching in the glutes. side. Okay, then you can sit up. You're going to roll over, go into your child's pose, so feet together, knees apart, sit your hips back onto your feet, stretch your arms out in front of you, and then you can just raise your forehead on the floor. Okay, and then you can move your arms over to the left hand side a little bit. And other side. And relax. Hold on everyone, thanks so much for joining our session today. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and then enjoy your weekends as well. Um, if you have any questions swimming related or just general questions about bio exercise, please feel free to email me at cbwater at cisa.com um, and then I'll try to get back to your questions if there are any. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you next week.